Welcome to the SWPP Roadshow. I'm really looking forward to this event. I will confess, though, I would rather be with you and working alongside Colin Jones and his team today. I'm really sad I couldn't make it physically. However, I'm here in soul and spirit. The Roadshow is such a great event, hence me feeling sad that I couldn't join you. It's a wonderful opportunity for all in business. And I, like you, was as keen to see all of the suppliers, chat to like-minded friends, get to know the industry again and in more detail. I always get giddy about meeting those that serve us from our beautiful album manufacturers, software companies, people that help us develop our photographic skills, like the wonderful team at the Flash Centre. Gosh, you have got a feast there to dive into, and I'm envying each and every one of you. So firstly, sad I couldn't be with you, but I'm here and going to work alongside you. We've never done this before. This is a first for me, a first for the SWPP. And here's the thing, it's the first for you too. So we hope it works, even if it feels a little organic. We really want to always ensure as a team that we support you. The SWPP invest a great deal in the care and the attention, the development of you as photographers. And here's the thing, I'm on their mission too. So let's get started. Do you want a job or a way of living as a photographer? Sure you do. Being a photographer requires many, many, many skills. And what I will say now, many of the answers you're searching for will be here with me online and in this room today. You have got a lot of like-minded friends there, people that have answers for you that will help you not just be a photographer, but earn that living. Building a business is not about creating a job, and I'm sure all of you will agree with me. What it's actually about is finding a way to live, a way to live alongside a business, a way to live as an artisan. So I want you to dedicate some time this autumn and today to really think about how you're earning that living, thinking about how you're developing the business. I'm gonna throw lots and lots of questions at you in good old Catherine Styley, as I always do. And I'm gonna give you lots of things to consider. So if you've got notepads to hand, make plenty of notes. If you haven't, really think about the business and you and your photography for our 60 minutes. I've got a lot to share with you. And it's all designed to make you improve where you're at. All designed to help you create a better way of living with the business. I've got 10 tips. So when you can, jot them down. We're going to send you this presentation anyway, but jot them down. I'm promising you now, on behalf of the SWPP, you're going to have this. You can listen to it again and again. But there's nothing like engaging with a good old notepad. So you've, if you've got one to hand, utilise it. Start to collect all of your thoughts. Because this is all about not us doing a job. Who wants a job? We don't want a job. We want a way of living. Most of us left a job to have a way of living. So let's get prepared for a little change. Let's move on. Number one, my first tip, number one, beliefs and values. This is what today's consumer is tapping into. And this is what you have to tap into too with your business. Belief. What do you believe in in your business? What do you really believe in? What's going well? What do you value? We're going to talk about selling later. So let's start off with belief. You've got to believe it first. You've really got to believe in your product more than anybody else on this earth. What do you believe in? Think about from first point of contact with your clients right through to the delivery of those gorgeous albums and frames. What do you believe in? What's working really well for you? And what do you value? 
because all of this stuff, let's call it stuff, you're going to take to market. And it's vastly important to not just take a product to market, to take a message to market, an understanding. So number one, get your beliefs and values in shape. Number two, a biggie, you're worth it. You've heard that before. Let's step aside for a second and think about you and that word value again. Think about what you deliver to the consumer. I passionately believe we give them far more than just pictures, far more than just paper, far more than just albums and frames. We give them a moment, a memory. We give them time. We capture time through our lenses, through our creativity. And it all has a worth. It thrills me when I hear a photographer finding their worth. In fact, I'm sure she won't mind. I had an email this morning from one of my onliners telling me, you never guess what, I've hit my highest sale. You never guess what, I'm using my new price guide. You never guess what, I'm getting bookings. It's working. I found my worth through understanding my value. And that thrilled me for Amanda, because wowie, is she an incredible photographer? And I'm guessing right now, sat in the room there in Birmingham, are many more incredible photographers that are artistic. You have an imagination. You give epic service. And you're worth it. It fills my heart with happiness when I see a photographer learn and they've learned to sell their worth. So question, jot this down. Do you and your consumer understand your worth? Do you and your consumer understand your worth? How does it feel when you sell you? How does it feel when you sell you? Just think about that for a moment and I'll pause. It's important you have a real understanding of the energy that you create in the business. You want to sell with no apology. You want to sell with a passion. You want to sell with an understanding. None of us are doing this because we're greedy, far from it. We're doing this because we love what we do. And I know you'll agree with me. I also believe that our artistic spirit and our creativity as a price tag and now is the time to understand it. I think, and I've said this recently in a blog post, if you haven't read it, go and find it. I'll send it you if you want it. And it's all about, this is our moment as photographers. We have seen the energy fly through Instagram. We have seen the energy fly through all social platforms. We've seen the impact photography has on Pinterest. We've seen the impact that photography is having on advertising boards, the consumer, and magazines. This is our moment as photographers. You don't get a love, a like, a follow if you are presenting to the consumer something shoddy. And that's not what we do. So now is the time to celebrate your skills and expertise as a photographer and really understand what you're selling and your value. This is all about my number three, folks getting in shape. This is the perfect time. Many of you will have worked super hard over summer. And here's the thing, you're gonna be working super hard over autumn and winter too. And what's not to like about that? Being proactive in our businesses. Getting in shape is all about taking control of the important factors and how you perform consistently and daily we have an enormous impact on the business. If I was with you right now, I'd be saluting you for, for sitting in that chair. I'm imagining you in the room and I'm imagining you with your notepads. I'm trying to visualize who you are. I'm trying to visualize where you're from. But what I am sure of, if I'm not sure of where you're sat, is if you're sat in that chair, you are already on the road for getting in shape. You're already taking control. You're not sat at home watching the rain. 
you're actually thinking about the business and your real purpose. Getting in shape is about finding your purpose, really understanding what the business is giving you. Write that down. What is the business giving you right now? Not just as creative, fulfillment, financially. I think we're all in business for many reasons. I know for me, I love being in business. I love being in business because I love serving you. I love being in business because I love photography. I love being in business because I love the challenge. I love the game. I love the industry. It makes me happy. And I want to earn a living too. And so do you and make no apologies for that. So what's out of shape? If your business was going to have a health check right now, what's out of shape? Jot the first few things that come into your mind. What's out of shape? Are you not selling well? Are you not marketing well? Are you not happy with how you approach light and lighting? We had an epic day at the Flash Centre last week when we were discovering with Brian and Simon the whole aspects of lighting and the impact it can have on our creativity as wedding photographers. I was totally, as a stylist, blown away. I was getting in shape get it in shape for winter. So what do you need to get in shape for? What's holding you back? What's rattling that confidence at times? It's really important to give yourself permission to take control. So do, take control of everything. Be so sure about what you need to fix Here's the thing, if you don't have the answers, I'm here. There's a gang there in the room with you today. I might not be there with you today in body, but I am in spirit and I've got loads of plans and how we can connect later, plus having this recording. I hate the fact that I'm not with you. But I love the fact that I can help you. So what do you need to give generously to your business? And if you've written down, I'm totally in shape, got it covered, nailed it, woohoo, king of the industry. Well, you need to protect that. If you've got it all nailed, protect it, repeat it, regard it. Protect, repeat, regard. If you're singing from the mountaintops right now because you've nailed it, well, I'm saluting you for that, but be very careful. It all needs protecting. And if you're feeling a bit out of shape, what's on your list? What's in your mind? What's in that mind? Number four, visual impact. We've got to be really visual in our marketplace. We've got to take control of the marketplace. We want to take control of that Instagram feed. You all know that person who floods your feed. You all know that person who you're always drawn to like it. You all know that person who you love the work, that they're all the time. You're like, wow, they knock it out of the park all the time. They're making a visual impact. And you want to do that too. I'm going to talk later about our social media planner, but it's just leapt into my mind, so I feel I have to say. If you haven't already downloaded our complimentary social media planner for photographers, do that today. I'm going to help you do that, but do that today. Really important. Why? Visual impact. You want to make a real visual impact to the marketplace, not just online, but physically too. And how do you want to do that? Heart and head. Remember, number one, your consumer buys beliefs and values. They buy your heart and head. I meet some very smart photographers. I meet some really smart photographers, but they just don't market the head enough, their skills and their expertise. They're really super smart, but they're not telling anybody. I meet some extremely creative photographers, epic, artistic, talented, best kept secret in town. Is this you? Don't let this be you. Now is the time to start to sell your talent, skill and expertise I believe in the artist. I believe in being artistic. It's one of my values as an artisan. I even married one. Passionately believe in our skills. I know it all has a price tag. 
People pay a lot of money for your imagination. I had a great meeting a couple of days ago with a food magazine editor and we were exchanging ideas of what we could do each month together. And we were talking about 2018 and the plans that we might have for 2019. And it was all about the artist. It was all about being artistic. We weren't just filling space with pictures. We were filling space with stories. And that's what you do. You fill homes with stories. You fill lives with stories. And if they're really lucky, they get them in albums and frames. You all know I'm passionate about that. You all know I'm on team, team framing and team, team album, team folio, team print. Why? It has a visual impact. So, this session is all about getting to know you, getting to know the business. So how much impact are you having visually and how much are you sharing of your heart and head? You know, a few years ago, photographers talked about mistake. Photographers talked about a few years ago, I'm going to come to your wedding. I'm going to flit around. You'll barely notice I'm there. I'll just be in the background. You'll not see me. Well, they taught themselves out of a job. They made their job look so simple. They made their job look seem so relaxed. They taught themselves out of a job. Because if you're going to be invisible, you might as well be. This is not what the marketplace wants from you right now. Uh-uh, no way. It wants you to be visible. Your business wants you to be visible. This is an important factor. Pay attention. So how visible are you in the marketplace? And how much of that heart and head are you sharing? Your beliefs, your viewpoints. I say this to photographers all the time, dialogue your work, dialogue your work, dialogue your work. When I'm on a shoot now, I'm dialoguing what we're doing, why we're doing it, why we're moving this here, why we're moving this there. If we're on a food and commercial shoot, why I'm moving this here, why I'm moving this there, the impact it's gonna have on the look. Why am I doing that? I'm just demonstrating my value. Do you do that enough when you're on a shoot, on a wedding or on a portrait shoot? Do you demonstrate enough verbally what's going on in your head, what's going on in your heart? Start that immediately. And if you're new to the industry and you're in your first throes of joining our industry, well, firstly, welcome. And secondly, make this your way, a way of being. And if you've been in the industry a long time, and I'm guessing a few of you sat in the room have, are you dialoguing enough? Has your craft become so instinctive to you? You've simply forgot to say. So get those vocal cords working. Speak from the heart again. If you were to describe your pictures, what would you say? This is an important picture for me because it was one of my magical moments last year when we had the opportunity to go up to Gilchester Organics just before harvest. And it's an important picture to me because it's all about the heart and the head. This guy is one of the wisest millers in our globe. His expertise is sought globally. He works for many, many universities. He's a really smart guy, but look at him. He's a happy man too in his crop. He's putting his heart and soul into this. And this is what has made him successful. This picture reminds me of how we all should be all of the time. So let's start supporting our businesses verbally. It's about learning how to market your business, learning how to get the next client through everything you say to the current client, to the marketplace. Just pause for a moment and just think about everything I've said and the impact this could be having, not on just your now, today, but your tomorrow and the future. Really important. Number five, question. Do enough people know you're in business? Do we enough people know you're in business? It's nothing wrong with a little bit of ambition. Nothing wrong with a little ambition. 
nothing wrong with wanting to create a very attention seeking business. I want you to bring to your business some think bigger culture. Perhaps now is the perfect time to be determined for it. I'll call it it for a second or two, your daydream business. You want it to have the right clients, enough clients. So it has to attract. What is attracting clients into your business right now? What's working? What's building the business? What's attractive about the business? Think about everything you have from your store, from your visuals, from your sales tools, to you, the ambassador of the business. It's all about client attraction. You are sending signals to your clients all the time. Nobody is sat in the room right now because you want an ordinary business. Hell no. You want an extraordinary business. And what makes an extraordinary business? A business that has visual appeal. A business that has values and beliefs within it. A business that understands their consumer and what they need to serve and the why. This is not about the money. This is about getting the money. This is about earning the living. This is about creating a very attractive, attention-seeking business. So how are you doing? Do you have enough clients? Say to yourself after this trip, who knows I'm in business and is it enough? Who knows I'm in business and is it enough? Say to yourself, are your marketing threads working? You know, I talk a lot about the marketing funnels and the synergy and how they all have to work. I talk about it all the time here in the office with my team. I talk about it all about time when I'm out there lecturing, talking about it now with you. Why? It's so important. So important. Get the attraction right. Never see the ambition you have for your business as ugly. Just see it as a place to hang your talent from. Number six, a big one, language. Jot this down, jot this down. I did some market research recently with some photographers in our Aspire Knowledge Gallery. Just as a side note, if you're not in, just let me know and I'll let you in. But I did some research in our Knowledge Gallery and I asked photographers what they wanted to know about marketing, what was the really important things to them. And I paid attention to everything you said. And that's why you've got your social media planner. That's why I'm about to do something on social uh, media for Facebook Live. I've done a tutorial for you. It's just in the wings there waiting to come out. We've done a lot for you. We paid attention. You know what else we did? We started to write the language for you because it was the one thing that photographers didn't like the most. Because I asked what was important and it was the one thing you all ignored. And I thought, holy smoke, that's the one thing they need to get right. So I'm just gonna get it right for you. So here's the good news. I'm gonna help you. Clients read very little now. So the good news is to those guys who are chatting to Zenfolio or chatting to, you know, many of the manufacturers that are there with you today, when you're chatting to Zenfolio and you're looking at your website, when you're chatting to all of the others that have website services, you're chatting to them. The good news is when they're chatting to you about your website, you're going to need to write now, not volumes, just significance. I think that's good news. We're not wordy people. We love the picture. Pictures do speak a thousand words. That's why they matter too. But I need you to master language. I need you to learn how to speak to your clients. They're reading far less. Tip one, they're reading far less. So what they read has to be more significant. I often say on many of my marketing courses, you know, you need to sell yourself like the gin manufacturers sell gin. You need to speak to your consumer like the gin manufacturers speak to theirs. Look at what happened to the gin manufacturers. Only a few years ago, we were drinking Bombay and Gordon's gin. Now, 
Look at that marketplace. What do they do? Product in the bottle isn't much different, but the language in the packaging is revolutionary. Yours needs to be too. You're talking to women who are busy. You're talking to boys who are busy. So what do they want to see? An impact. They want to know, number one, why they need you. What are you going to solve? So number one, why do they need you? and what they're gonna solve. That should be your opening statement on every single Facebook page, at every single website page, every single opening page for blogs. They also want you to give them language that's easy to read, lots of different fonts, lots of different text sizes. They want you to write to them in bullet points, captions. They don't want paragraphs, short and sweet. So when you get home, homework, you never leave one of my sessions without homework. Go back, look at your blogs, look at your website, look at how you're speaking on, on Facebook. Are you talking to your consumer? Are you speaking to their hearts? Are you telling them about what's in your head? And is it punchy, short, sharp and sweet? When you see later posts of what we're doing, I'm busy and I've written and tested many, many client letters over summer with many photographers that have been willing to test them with me. And the impact has been incredible. And we've been writing to the hearts and the heads of the consumer with language that matters to them, just like the gene manufacturers did. So I say to you all, when you get back, look at everything, your emails, your letters, are you inspired? Number one, do they inspire you? And number two, are they speaking the right language for today's consumer? She's savvy. She's time poor. She reads off her iPhone or her other smartphone, but she's reading off her phone. So we need to be sharp, punchy, to the point, selling the magic, selling you, selling the why, selling the value, all in sharp, short sentences. So. Number six, do not underestimate this one and watch what I'm doing. If you are not in our knowledge gallery already, holy smoke, I need you in there because I need you raiding, I need you stealing, I need you putting things into your business, I need you using these tools to help you. Tell you get the language right. Think about how you sell yourself and what you say. And here's the thing, I did a lot of studying three years ago. This is really hard. I did a lot of studying three years ago, decided I would change the whole way Aspire spoke. You many have noticed it. You know, I have many testers out there. And they're all saying, Catherine, I'm liking this. I'm stealing this. I'm implementing this into my business. That's the plan. But three years ago, when I looked at all of our language and how we needed to speak, I changed the way I did everything. And I've got to tell you right now, it's been hard. It's not felt natural. It's felt forced at times. And that's because I've been breaking old habits. I've been in the marketing game for a couple of decades now. So I needed to break some habits. I needed to change how I spoke. and I needed to do it quick. So I did. And I want to give all of those tools and techniques to you too. First job though, we need to look at those brands. We need to look at those websites. We need to look at those business cards. What we want to do is inspire, engage, speak from the head and the heart but not bore. Marketing matters. Well, folks, for those that are sat there that know me really well, you knew this was coming. I love marketing. Oh my gosh, if I could do anything, I'd want you to fall in love with it too. Marketing is an interesting one. It's one of those funny, misunderstood words. Marketing, look at it. It's not got great appeal to the creative. But we really need to look at the matters because it really does. Marketing really matters. And I want you to have a really good relationship with it. I want you to learn all about marketing. I want it to not become a job, become a way of living. I want it to become something you do every day. So are you marketing every day? Little and often? Are you doing that? You need to market really effectively because this is the big thing. 
this is the one. It's the one thing after brand that has the influence on how many clients you get, the type of clients you get, and how fast the business grows. You need to devour everything you know about marketing. You need to ensure that you are visual. You need to make sure you use your heritage to sell you, your backstory, some of those beautiful, treasured old fashioned values you have about the family and how the family should be captured. There's nothing not to be liked about that. You need to learn how to sell yourself artistically, emotionally, homing in on that why all the time. You need to learn how to use the funnels every day. So much so in the end, you even don't even realize anymore your marketing. It just becomes a habit, what you do and the way you live your life. Photographers often say to me, how do I find the right customers? Jot this down. Actually, it's not about that. Your job is to get found. You don't need to be go hunting for clients, by the way. They're already hunting for you. They just can't find you right now. Clients are out there all the time. The consumer is a hungry consumer. They enjoy spending. They enjoy visiting the marketplace. Look at how busy the shopping malls are. Look how busy the internet is. Look how busy social media is. Your consumer is already telling you they love marketing. But what you need to do is help yourself get found. You don't need to go out there and be, be totally over concerned about finding them. Because actually, they're trying to find you. So you need to be more visual online, in communities, in the marketplace, out collaborating with your suppliers. Make sure clients can find you. Make sure you become a visual feast in the marketplace. Seven is a really important tip to each and every one of you. It's a biggie. Number eight, brand you. Always slightly controversial to talk about brand you, but I'm prepared to. Really important when you're running your business to really helm it well. My partner said to me this morning, as I was struggling to dress with chronic back pain, are you going to go in in your joggers and your PJs? I said, hell no, I'm talking to the SWPP. I'm putting my outfit on. So I am dressed right now, just as I would be if I was at the trade show representing the SWPP. I think J Juliet and Phil and Colin and that lovely gang, they deserve better than me sat right now in my office, in my PJs and my joggers. So no, I got dressed. I was on brand me. You can't see me, but I feel better. I feel better. I feel like I'm serving you. You've got to do the same. If you are working for your business and you're picking up that phone and you're answering emails and you're serving your social media platforms, dress for it because it changes the mindset. It changes the mindset. So even though somebody had to put my shoes on today, I still got shoes on because I'm at work on the business, being the brand, serving the brand. You need to serve the brand well. Think about, I'm going to break this down into categories for you. Think about how you speak. We're just about to um, head to a trade show, Digital Splash this weekend. It's not going to be easy because we're going to meet lots of different like-minded photographers and we're going to meet lots of different like-minded photographers who all have a slightly different voice. And you know, the ones I'm hunting for are the ones with the positive voice. You represent your business so well. That's why I was wish I was meeting you because I want to hear that voice. I want to see how you present your business. The biggest thing you take with you is your voice, how you sound, how you be in business. Secondly, I've hinted at this just a second ago, how you look, are you the brand? If you were to place all of your work looks on hangers, what would it say about the business? Third one, how you behave, positive mental attitude, how you behave, how you serve the brand, how you serve your consumer, how you serve the marketplace, how you are with your suppliers, 
how you behave. I want to say this to you now because I can't be with you. So I just want to say this to you now. It's just leapt into my heart. So I really feel I need to say this to you now. In the room with you right now is some amazing people. I'm imagining like blue software there. I'm imagining one vision with you. I'm imagining, uh, I'm visualizing a bet, the flash centers with you. I'm imagining maybe Charlie Kaufman's with you. He's a dynamo. I'm imagining who else is with you. This will be some amazing people in that room today. Oh my goodness. Uh, There'll be some amazing folks there I'm trying to visualize them all. And they're all going to be visualizing you too. They're all going to hear you, see you, see how you are about your business. And remember this, they are also potential clients. They all have families. They all have businesses. You're always selling yourself. You're always selling yourself, not just to consumers, but to the suppliers too. I want to question you this today. I'd like you to talk to every one of them, even the ones you've never talked to before, even the ones you don't quite understand what they do. You look at the stall and you think, what do you do? What do you do? So you visit the stall, you don't quite understand what they do. Firstly, I quest all of you this. And suppliers, if you're listening, and I don't know if you are, pay attention challenge them, make them work hard for their businesses because I want you to introduce your business. I want you to tell them all about your business because they might have an answer for you. I want you to engage because I want you to learn how to do brand you, how to be in business, how to represent your business. I'm not allowing you to walk past anybody. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. Too many do that. I make a point sometimes of going up to people. I don't know what they do. And I look at the stand and I, we chat and we engage. I'm like, holy smart, this is the best thing I've learned today. This is what I really needed to know about my business. But I was walking by. Don't walk by. Practice being brand you. Not only do you want you to practice here today at the, at the road show, I want you to practice this every time you take your business out, whether you're going to a supermarket store, buying florals for the studio for the forthcoming week, whether you're out there buying clothes for this autumn with your children at swimming groups, take your brand, take your business, take it out. Why? You can't afford not to. It's really important to talk about your business all the time. I do this all the time and I, I build a business from it. All the time I talk to people about Aspire, White Feather & Co, our sister company, our little photographic business. I talk about my lovingly artisan business, the bakery, and that, that habit and that routine always leads to business. I did it last week at a food festival that I was at with my partner. I was talking about White Feather to this beautiful, amazing patisserie business. I was just chatting to him. He was admiring Aidan's photography. We've had a beautiful art piece done by One Vision. He was just admiring that and what we've been doing recently. And I started to chatting to him about his business and White Feather. And here's the thing. It's led to a shoe. You don't have to pay a lot of money to advertise your business. You just have to speak about it. Be number eight. Promise me. And here's the thing. I'll never know, sadly, because I can't be with you. But I do have my spies. So I'll ask Nick at One Vision and I'll ask the gorgeous Ian at Light Blue Software and Colin. Because here's the thing. I want you to talk to those guys too. And if you're not already looking at the business school and the the beautiful convention next year in January you need to be it's the best thing our industry has it's the place to be why is it the place to be because it's all about this bad boy photographic menu get in shape get in shape the world is a change in shape your consumer is really savvy it's really important to engage. Your consumer is bombarded with photographic material. The threads are full of it. They are entertained by the visual all of the time, whether it's through beautiful lifestyle TV programs. It's all about adapting now. 
It's all about ensuring that you take to market pictures that your consumer can relate to, that speak to their, our consumer is very varied. Your consumer may be different to my consumer. Know your consumer, understand that menu. What pictures do they need to see that will engage with them? You're an authentic storyteller. So make sure the pictures that you share with your consumer are the pictures that engage with them, not just emotionally, but engage with their lifestyles too, physically. Don't compromise. Whatever's in your business right now, whatever's on your platform from weddings, photographs, portrait pictures, review them all. Look at them. Are they talking to your consumer in the right way? And are they right for autumn and winter? If your business is still looking very summery, now is the time to clean it up. Start thinking autumn and winter. What are you selling this autumn and winter? What are you selling this autumn and winter? It's really important to take to market the right product. Photographic menu is a biggie. Don't ever underestimate it. Why? You're dealing with humans and you're a human too. You're dealing with humans and you're a human too. People love a bit of human. I spoke to Orange yesterday to change my phone. It had a slight accident. And I love the fact after three steps, I spoke to a human. We live in a world of automation. And don't get me wrong, Aspire has just become very automated. But automated with a human at the end, a hure automated but with a human through the process. I love the fact that in a moment I'm going to say to each and every one of you, if any of you want to ask me a question after this presentation, just ring me because you can't actually ask me right now. Just ring me or email me because I want you to know there's a human here. And here's the thing. Your consumers want to feel that there's a human in your business too. Remember, your clients buy people and they're buying you. You want your clients to feel that they're in a business, they're in a process, but there's a human holding their hand all the way through it. So when you're writing on your social platforms, your blogs and your terminology, and you're speaking to your clients, you're speaking to them through your voice. There's always a small thread between you and your clients. You need it to be a small thread because you never want anybody to break it. Let's just focus on this for a second. I mentioned the word client there. You want your clients to feel like clients, not customers. How many times have you felt like a customer in a business when you really wanted to feel like a client? People like to belong now. People like to belong to their coffee shop, belong to where they buy their bread from. They like to belong to their artisan baker. They like to belong to their barista. They like to belong to their hairdresser. They like to belong to their photographer. So do you feel your clients feel belonged? Do they belong to you? Do they get that sensation? Social media is having a huge impact on us as photographers in a good way, in a glorious way. It's given us an opportunity to market furiously, hence creating the social media planner. But what it's also doing is distancing ourselves at times. How many times now have you got a friend and you don't feel the need to pick the phone? You don't feel that need to pick up the phone because you see what's going on in her life. You see what's happening in people's lives now, so you don't really need to ring. You don't need to go for a coffee. That thread is getting too long. Make sure you keep close to your clients and you just don't just communicate with them online and virtually. You need to do some physical contact too. Pick up the phone more. People have a funny thing about the phone. Even me suggesting to you, you know, you can ring me. So many photographers say to me, really? I can call you? Sure. Do I need to make an appointment? Well, not all the time. If I'm here, just pick up the phone. And if I'm here, clearly we'll speak to you. 
It's about becoming more human. As our world becomes busier, we, what we want to place in it is elements that humanize our business, from signing your work, to being very visual for heart and head, to being in a position where you can contact people, being very visual at your wedding fairs, country fairs, food festivals, Christmas fates this year. Take your business out. Take your business out. Really important. My number 10. So, and finally, I couldn't help it. I decided to slip in another because it was really important to me to mention this. Artistic. Jot this down. Artistic athlete. I want you to become an artistic athlete. What your tribe wants is your imagination. Your consumer wants something different. They want something they can't do themselves. They've got an iPhone, but they can't actually do what you do. I place this picture in front of you as a little surprise, slightly out of focus, but actually totally intentional. This was shot, laid down by Jenny Hayworth in the uh, spelt field of Gilchester Organics. And she was laid on the floor, the crop, because it's an organic crop, it was actually taller than Jen. So she lay down in the floor and the crop was moving at such a speed. It was a really windy day in the northeast and it was moving really fast and you could hear the grain and you could hear the wheat. It was incredible. And this is actually one of the Miller's favourite pictures. Just a bit of artistic fun. He said to Jen, what are you doing when she started to lie down? She said, oh, I love the way it's moving. I love what's happening here. It's, oh, it's gorgeous. And so she did that. Clearly, it's never going to go to press, but he loves it. He wants it on his wall, wants it on his business card. His heart and his head is in this material. It's just a happy play shot. Many of you will do this at times for yourselves or on workshops. We always like a little bit of play here at Aspire. Sometimes your happy play shots is where, where your heart is as an artist. And that's what the consumer likes us to see. Us playing just as a chef plays with ingredients, just as a hairdresser plays with colour and style and shape. We need to do the same, but of course, we're going to verbalize it. So start to think about yourself as an artistic athlete. Start to think about pushing boundaries. Start to think about where you're at photographically. When you wrote your list about getting in shape and what was out of shape, what was on your list? What do you want to repair? It frustrates me I'm not with you today because I wanted to talk to you and speak to you and see you and feel your businesses. So we could chat about being artistic and we could chat about marketing and we could chat about selling and we could chat about your products and your business. We're just gonna have to take that chat elsewhere, over the phone, in the Aspire Knowledge Gallery, via an email, but it's important to chat. <clears throat> It's all about pushing those boundaries and earning a living as a photographer. So what will help us chat is download this. If you see this on the Aspire Facebook page, it's actually on the Aspire Facebook page. It's in the Aspire Knowledge Gallery. Download this link. If you want to know what to do, where to do it, when to do it, when to post, how to use your artistic spirit, download this link. It was designed with you in mind to help you. And it was designed to help you earn a decent living, not even just a living. You're going to see some gorgeous things today in the trade show. And you'll talk yourself out of a few, watching your budgets, watching your cash flow. There's nothing wrong with that. Salute you for that. And you'll see some things that you think, I'm going to get ready for them. So let's get ready for them. Let's make sure we get the business in shape. So let's start to push some boundaries. Let's start to push you. If you feel you're drifting and you're plodding and you're just drifting from week to week, month to month, 
make note of that. Let's get hold of it all. Let's no longer accept average. Let's go for exceptional. We've spoke a lot over the last 40 minutes, nearly 60 minutes now or so about photography and the importance of partnering marketing with our photography. It is important. They are a partner. We want to make them a happy marriage. We love photography, but we've got to learn to market it well. So in a moment or in a moment's time, our time together will be over. And I'll just visualize you introducing yourself there to all the suppliers. And I'll visualize all of the things that you're doing. But what I want to visualize is you getting in touch to earn that decent living. And what do we always do normally at trade shows is we always give you an offer, a trade show offer. So even though I can't be with you, so traveling was impossible, what I will do is still give you the offer. So it's here. If you want it, email in, give us a call, and we'll make sure that we look after you and we serve you well. We don't want to let you down. So this is the package we're launching at the moment. The one I think you want the most is the interactive package. It's all about marketing. It's four intensive learning chapters, all supported by educational booklets. It includes fortnightly question and answer sessions, live broadcasts from myself in your private community. It's a very private community where we share the knowledge. We also do weekly updates through Facebook Live, things I want you to focus on for your business, mentoring you weekly. It has a lifetime membership in a private community, very different to the Knowledge Gallery of which I've been talking to you about. This is a very private area. On the website, the package is targeting its real price. So on the website is 540, but we're doing an, an epic discount today of 287. How do you get that? To give us a call, it's there for you. Alongside all of these packages, whether you're already on our online programs and you want this one, and that for you as a solo package would be 295. Or whether you need everything, you're just starting out, you need to learn about how to do a business plan, how to create a brand, how to create the client journey. And again, heavily discounted at £500. But other goodies, write this down, Autumn 30. If you've got that discount code, Autumn 30, and you utilise it this October, you will get a 30% discount off all of our workshops. That discount has been given in this package already. So these are the things I would have shown you on the stand. I would have talked to you a lot about our Marketing Your Potential online program. People often ask me, how long is the program? It's a lifetime. You've got those 35 videos and you'll watch them again and again. Your question and answer sessions unfold fortnightly. We just did an amazing question and answer session with Light Blue Software, all recorded, all there in the community for your development and your business progress. That is an amazing program. One of the best things I've ever written as a trainer and as a business developer. I'm very proud of it. And I just wanted to share it with you. So I hope you don't mind me doing that. I couldn't be with you. I couldn't get into the car and get to the stand. Totally impossible for me today. So I just want a small thread between you and me. If there is any questions that this presentation has triggered, email me them directly. If you're in the Knowledge Gallery, just ask us. We'll watch it all through the day. Make sure you do or pick up the phone. You're in a, the hands of an amazing organisation and they will look after you as well today, as will all of my like-minded friends. So I'm saluting the suppliers that are alongside you today. Have a great day. Have an amazing day. Don't forget to pick up or download your social media pack. It's incredible, by the way. Not only have I shown you what to do every day, I've given you a monthly planner. I've given you amazing sales tools, what to do. And the next one is all about Facebook Live and broadcasting and presentation skills, etc.
So have a great day. It's 11 o'clock now. My 60 minutes are up. So on behalf of the Aspire team, thank you so much for your kindness, your understanding and knowing why I couldn't be with you today. And it kills me. And on behalf of me, I would really like to thank Colin Jones for making this very, very possible, not just for you, but for me too. So Colin, a big thank you from me. The broadcast has come to an end. Have a great day at the Roadshow. You're going to have an epic time. We've recorded everything for you and in good old SWPP style, we will make sure together as a team that we get this recording to you so you can watch it again and again and again. So from me, uh, thanking each and every one of you for your attention. Thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you. Mm -hmm.